Good afternoon all. This is a little GU10 light bulb with a difference. Ooh. And the difference is it's got Zigbee so I can do something like this. Hey Google, switch GU10 off. Got it. Turning off GU10. It calls it GU10 for some reason. Um, and I'm going to cut out the first two words because I don't want to keep triggering your assistant device so uh, I'll edit this shot. Change GU10 to half brightness. Got it. Setting GU10 brightness to 50%. And then you can do colour things if I can remember what the colours are. I think set GU10 to ivory. All right. Changing GU10 to ivory. And ivory is the name it gives uh, cool white. It does have a cool white, but actually that's a mix of cool and warm. Uh, one of them is candlelight, I think. Let me try this. Set GU10 to candlelight. Sure. Changing GU10 to candlelight. Candlelight. <laughs> candlelight. Um, I can't remember what the yellowest one is. I'll have to look it up in my tablet. Okay, yes, candlelight is the yellowest of all the colours. And ivory. Set GU10 to ivory. Okay, changing GU10 to ivory. Oh, I think it must have been on ivory. Uh, ivory is the coolest of the white colours. But that's not what this video is about. I'm going to take this apart and probably destroy it in the process. But first, switch GU10 off. Sure. Turning GU10 off. So this thing is uh, the Livano Lux. Oh, that's interesting. This one isn't Silvercrest. No, this is Livano Lux. I mean, it's all Lidl, part of this Lidl home series. And uh, you can do that thing. I won't say it. And uh, I got this one cheap. It's got the 30% off sticker, so I couldn't resist. And I thought, let's just take it apart in the name of science and hope that this video earns enough money to pay me back whatever it was that it cost. Well, what was it? £6.59. Um, so I can't see any way into this other than through the front and there is a glued in because you can see the glue residue uh, front plastic face. It's lovely and warm this thing. That's really nice. Uh, okay, so let's try and dig this out with a knife. This could go horribly wrong. I'll do it off camera. So the inevitable happened and the tip of the knife just broke off in here but I've managed to get a screwdriver in there and I've got the front off. There's the glue. Uh, okay so oh that's interesting what's that? Oh that's the antenna! That's the aerial for the Zigbee. So what have we got in here? We've got uh, four uh, warm white LEDs and four cool white LEDs. This is a BP1638. I don't think I can get a reflection off the name there. But that's what it is. Uh, it's a couple of zero ohm resistors and some not zero ohm resistors. I can't quite see what they're doing. They go to, oh, they seem to be in parallel actually and run into one of the pins of that chip. There's also a connector there. It looks like there are four pins coming up from some stuff underneath. So this front board should lift out, but I am having difficulty getting something behind it to lift it out. Let's have another go. The only reference I can find to the BP1638 is in Chinese and well, it's an Alibaba page and I can't uh, get any uh, English data from that. You can imagine the heat is generated by the LEDs and to some extent the resistors. Actually I'm not sure there are any resistors because these seem to be for setting some sort of parameter on here. So uh, there was some reference to this being a PWM chip which makes perfect sense. Now the heat is going to be dispersed through this board so I presume this is aluminium backed and it does look you can see some white compound here it looks like it's glued down onto this sort of outer ring. So that's how the heat is got from this board and out to the outside body of this device. So if I lift this board out, I'm going to be breaching that um, heat transfer mechanism. 
oh dear while digging the uh this plate out i of course leant against the side and broke that off never mind it might still work and i slightly bent the tip of these actually but they're all right so this is lifting out now of course i don't want to angle this too much because i'll uh stress that connector well perhaps that doesn't matter too much but let's lever that out and lever this out and yes it's coming out and oh i can see a transformer underneath can you see that yeah there it is so inside here we can see um that there's a transformer here so i'm not sure that this is just a simple capacitive dropper circuit it looks a bit more sophisticated than that um, there's the Zigbee radio and in fact you can see this antenna is soldered to one of the pins. It looks like this board sits in a slot and actually uh, comes through this uh, power supply board. There's the little four pin connector that connects to that which enables you to I suppose put that on last. I'm really in two minds about pulling this out because I'm going to destroy it. Um, just a note about this block. Now is this going to be heat transmissive? or heat um, insulating. My feeling is it might be insulating actually because you want to try and keep this lot cool um, but this outer ring is going to get quite hot and then that radiates out of the outside. This front plate is going to get quite hot so there's little point in bringing that heat into the electronics. It does seem it would be more sense to try and keep that heat away from the electronics this board is loose and I can move it slightly but it seems to have a bit of a twist on it. It looks like it should have sat horizontal but it's kind of gone a bit twisty. Probably something due to the way it's connected to these two pins at the bottom. And I'm just in two minds about whether to go any further with this. Uh, there is something else I can show you down in there. There's quite clearly a electrolytic capacitor in there which also would need to be kept cool so I am thinking that this plastic block in here is um, a piece of insulation to prevent too much heat getting into the electronics. I'll try tugging on this but I just have to make this decision in my mind and I find it very hard to destroy things. Um, it's kind of half destroyed already and the metal there is exposed so that could be I, you know you, you can't tell whether this is going to be live when it's powered up also of course you don't know which is live and neutral because you can put this in either way around yeah maybe i'll plow on and then um if this video earns enough money to buy a new one I'll, I'll buy a new one so i think to progress any further i need to pull this block out now it's well glued in with the thermal glue there so i think the only way this is going to come out is if i drill a hole in it put a screw in and try and pull it out by the screw i'll give that a go so there's my screw screwed into the hole I drilled. Oh yes, that does look like it's going to lift out. So I'll put the other screw in there and try and lift the whole block out. Well, that was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. So that block has come out and we're left with that. So it looks like the printed circuit board does disappear right down into the into this well of the um, heatsink, effectively, I suppose that is. Now, can I pull the board out? The other thing I thought is that these might possibly unscrew but then again they might not. I think they're turning but I'm not sure that's doing any good. Okay I think I see how this was done. I think on the back of this board there are two solid core wires. They were passed through holes in the GU10 pins which run through the center there obviously and then I think they are clamped in place by some sort of hydraulic press that was that pressed that little pip in there and that's what's pressing against the wire so I think if I try to withdraw the board it's going to come out and never go back on again so should I write this one off well all right then well, I hate to do this, but I think it's the only way to get these off. I'm just going to have to bend them off, effectively break them off. And it will rip the uh, wires on the underside of the board. But what else can I do? That's one off. 
and that's the other one off. Oh, there's some sort of connectory thing there. Uh, this plastic seems quite soft, so I'll cut that. And if I can get these pins out from the plastic, I can probably pull the whole lot through the front. No, that didn't hurt. It felt like it had hurt, but I don't think it has. Right, so that should now pass up through there. And uh, yeah, we have the circuit board. <laughs> this is never going to work again. So what do we have here? Well, this thing here wrapped up in heat shrink under there says FU. Oh, charming. So that's a fuse. Um, so it looks to me like incoming AC goes through that fuse. Oh, where does that go? Uh, well, I think probably it goes to the bridge rectifier. Yes, that's got plus and minus on it. So that's a bridge rectifier. So we're rectified. First thing that happens. Then I'm guessing it's smoothed by these capacitors. So these should be high voltage. Yes, 400 volts. And that one, I assume, is the same. They're also... Uh, oh, they're 130 degrees C. That's interesting because, yes, this thing would get quite hot in that enclosure. So, yes, it's rectified, smoothed. There's an inductor there. Then there is um, a little four-pin chip here. And I'm assuming that's the... Or what word could I use? It's like an agitator. It's an oscillator that chops up the DC and thus forces it through this transformer. And then on the uh, low voltage side, there presumably is a regulator somewhere. We've got a three pin device there. I'll try and get some numbers in a moment. Um, and then we need power for the Zigbee uh, thing here. Oh, does that give any secrets away? Probably not, because this is never going to work again. So the little Zigbee radio, and of course we need power for the LEDs. So that's done there. So I'll try and get some numbers off um, these two components to see whether this is a, a little switch mode uh, chip. That says Q1, so that's probably just a transistor. Well, let's do some close up. So the rectifier is a TL. 10p possibly but it does have a plus and minus on the output that um, switch mode chip is a i think it's a bp2522 and the transistor which may well be a mosfet is a u oh, i can't read that let me have a quick look at it myself um a u1sk i'll look those up well, that device Q1 came up in one result as a 3.3 volt regulator, which I guess makes sense because that's probably what the wireless module takes. This one is almost certainly the switch mode. Um, just trying to think whether that's the switch mode controller. Where's the feedback for the uh, transformer based power supply? It's not an opto, is it? But it's a BP2522, and the chip on this front board was a BP something or other. Let me just check that. Yeah, BP1638. So they may be related in that they're both used for this sort of application. So I can't say exactly what that's doing because I can't get a data sheet for that either. But that's it. My guess is that that does run on 3.3. Um, as for the voltage going to the LEDs, that could well be, well, it, it's likely to be um, whatever sits across these diodes, these light emitting diodes, and it's more that it's current controlled than it's any specific voltage. So that's my guess as to how that works. But this um, thing at the bottom here looks like it was quite a sort of nicely made right angled pin. Um, thing that sits on the board and then those right angle pins are guided in through these GU10 connectors when they were sitting in this plastic base they're not anymore and then there's some sort of crimp process that um, clamps that onto there but yes that looks quite nicely made not just a bog standard capacitive dropper 
But these capacitors are 130 degrees. That's interesting. But then I guess this thing does get quite warm sitting in its tin can. And I think it was five watts this lamp is. Yeah, here we are, GU10. Um, it's rated for 100,000 100, on-offs. Now, to my mind, what that means is that every time you switch it on and off, it stores its current state in a chip somewhere. I don't know whether there's um, a microcontroller on the Zigbee radio, but that looks like um, it's a flash memory type of duration. And this thing remembers its last state. So if you set it to yellow or something, take the power off and put it back on again, it would remember that. I can't show you that now, unfortunately. Um, 300,000 is that? Or, no, 30,000 hours of runtime, 280 lumens, and there's the five watts and also the color temperature range. Now, it's just one more chip here that uh, we ought to take a look at, and that's the chip on this wireless module. So each one looks like it comes with a dedicated address of some sort. That address will never be seen again, but there's a chip there, look. Let's take a look at that. Ooh, can I get any numbers off that, I wonder? Okay, yes, this is a Silicon Labs uh, EFR32MG21. That's what was stamped on the chip. Series 2 multi-protocol wireless system on a chip. Uh, it's got 2.4 gig wireless SOC optimized for line powered Zigbee thread and Bluetooth mesh applications, uh, lighting, gateways, voice assistance, smart metering. Uh, oh, it's got secure vault delivering security software with physically unclonable function, PUF. It's got a PUF function, hardware technology to greatly reduce the risk of IoT security breaches. Uh, Bluetooth, long range, all that stuff. And down here, lots of things about Zigbee and Thread Radio, QPSK, was that quadrature something, shift, phase shift keying, oh, ARM Cortex M33 <laughs> processor. I mean, just lots and lots of stuff. It's sad, isn't it, that, you know, such a powerful computer gets put in a bulb and then I break it for your fun. Well, and mine. And so that's it. That's what's in a little smart GU10 bulb, really condensed package. And I feel upset that I've broken it. I really do. I don't want to break things. I like things to work and it worked really well. Oh, well, there you go. Cheerio.